Do you know what I really love? I'll tell you something. What I really love is when people leave comments and say that they can't watch my videos anymore because of my language. That turns me on. Shit and piss. Okay, it is Sunday morning. Shit and piss. And I was planning to do any carving this weekend. I was not planning to do any carving this weekend. I planned to take the whole weekend off. Yesterday, I went to a flea market with an old friend just outside of uh, downtown Vancouver. Um, I'll show you guys some pictures of the outside of the... It's an old barn. It's pretty cool. It smells like shit and piss inside there, but it's super shit and piss inside there, but it's super cool, and uh, you can find lots of treasures there, so flea markets are good to go. Shit and piss. Here comes the cops. I didn't do it. I'll see you guys later. Shit and piss. Shit and piss. I got away once again. So anyways, I was saying I was, I was at this flea market. <clears throat> I was supposed to go to another flea market today, a different one with a friend, but he canceled because he had to work. It smells like shit and piss. But um, so what did I find at the flea market? I found this Meetabo, I don't know if that's how you say it, Meetabo die grinder for $50. This is like a, it can vary from $350 to $600. This, I have wanted this die grinder for a long time, but I wasn't going to spend that kind of money. $50 I got it for. Well, actually, it was an old Chinese lady. I shouldn't say old, but she was an elder Chinese lady. She had all these tools there. And I seen this. I was like, oh, it was like a bright light was shining. I grabbed it. That's 50 bucks. I've always wanted this thing, but I wasn't going to pay the big money for it. Then I said to her, what do we take 45, 45. And she starts, and puts her hands up. Screaming at me in Chinese, bah, 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 good tool, this is a good tool, this one, good one, number one quality. I said 45, 45. No, 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 good tool, 46, 46. I says, okay, 46, we'll take it easy, 46. Then uh, I says, you got a bag? And she gives me this plastic bag that was like this big. I says, no, no, a, a better bag, a cloth bag. And she goes, oh, this one, $2. It's one of those uh, recyclable bags, those cloth ones. This one, $2. And I says, okay, fine, fine, fine. So I gave her a $50 bill. I plugged it in and tried it, and it turned on. It ran fine. It's got speed control. The speed control worked. But then I uh, gave her a $50 bill. So what's 40 What is 40 I don't know. It, was, it turned out to be like $49. I says, no, no, no change. She goes, no, you take change. You take change. I said, no change, no change. I says, thank you. <laughs> she tried to sell me some cheap knockoff Dremels for like, I don't know. But anyways, I got this. So I don't know how well you guys are going to hear it, but let's turn it on. So here's the speed control. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I think this might be this. They br they branched off with, uh, I forget the name of the other tools. But um, even this one has a locking pin. Um to undo your screw here right here this sucker spins at um un unloaded at like 10 to 30 thousand 35 thousand rpms or yeah i don't know my eyes aren't that good but it compares to the uh the one that david grass bought me um this this is the high-end makita one with the silver handle this one has a silver hand too but i even got the rubber thing on it it came with the rubber i just can't believe it so I got four die grinders now. I got two of these uh, Makitas, the high-speed Makitas, and then I got uh, this Makita. This is my first die grinder I had. This is the more affordable one. If anybody wants to get into uh, die grinding, to bigger carvings, get yourself this Makita one. It, it spins a lot slower than these other ones, but whatever. So enough of that. So today's video, since I want to try this die grinder out, it's going to be a video on the challenge for the Facebook group we have, Carving Fusion World of Woodcarvers Original. There's a few of those groups out there, but I'll say the origin, the one that you want to sign up to or join has like 6,800 uh, 6, members in it now. It's a private group. It's There's no spam in that group at all. I'm not an admin in that group anymore, and sometimes I don't even belong. I, big groups aren't good for me. But the admins are doing such a fantastic job. I'm not going to, there's like eight admins. 
They're doing such a fantastic job and this is their challenge, but I'm still part of it. So I got to support it because the group is carving fusion group. So I'm going to carve a green man today. Their challenge is carve a green man. If you got to, if you want to join the group, you got to answer questions. So they say, why do you want to be in this group? Don't just say yes. You can even just say Jordy sent you if you watch this video, if you're not in that group. But so they have a challenge and there's going to be lots of good prizes in the challenge too. It's a green man. A green. <sighs> Slow down, Jordy. Slow down. Their challenge is a green man. I'm going to show some pictures right now that I got off Google. I'm going to, when I edit this video, I'm going to grab some and I'm going to show you pictures of the green man. A green man can be whatever you want it to be. In the old folklore world or whatever it is, they say green man is the bringer of spring or spring creates the green man because spring is when all the new flowers blossom and all the new thick little sprouts grow. So it's the bringer, spring is the bringer of new life and that's what the green man is, okay? I think, in my opinion, you know, all the pictures are going to show you is that you're going to see like real eyes and nose and then the leaves and stuff like that. A green man can be whatever you want it to be. But I think for this challenge, I'm not making this rule, so don't hold me to it, but you but should have some leaves in your face. Don't just carve a wood spirit. If you carve a wood spirit, I think the admins are going to say, no, that's not a green man. It has to have leaves and maybe some vines on it. That's what I'm going to do today. So... I also think that I'm going to donate this carving to the giveaway that they're having. It's it, You're going to have to go to the group and join the group and find out. I think it's lasting for three months, the challenge. And I also and there's also a good chance that I'm going to donate this first uh, die grinder that I got to the challenge. I got four die grinders. I don't need four die grinders. So I'm professional carvers might be like you're crazy to give that away i'm like i don't care because without you guys this channel's nothing so i'd like to one of and i'll put my name on it for you but this is what i started out carving with and um yeah so i'm going to donate this and i'm going to donate this i don't know if this is going to be in my oh they also say the green man needs to have a friend okay so like you carve your green man and it can have like a mushroom there or Whatever you want. The green man has to have a friend. So it has to be a little creature or another face in there or whatever you want. It can You can carve it into the piece itself. You can carve, you can get like a flat board like uh, this. You get a, this is something I'd like to see just carve Rob to do. Um, his little caricatures, like his knife carvings, a full little creature, green man with the arms and legs and stuff and have a little friend and put some moss down here and stuff and you can make a little theme of it. If it was winter time, that's what I'd be doing. Make a little green man theme with like a little friends and little stuff, stuff. So, but I'm, what we got to do right now, this is, I hope this is thanks for filming because I hate doing voiceovers and I say it lots and I know I repeat myself. So we got to go into the carving fusion warehouse and this is going to be a strict die grinder Dremel carving. The only reason I'm going to use this saw is to slice up the piece of wood that I, I uh, want to use. So here's the carving fusion warehouse. This still has to go to the owl. Um, Larry Dibbs, if you're watching this, wow, Wowsy's Workshop. It's got the YouTube channel there, Wowsy's Workshop. I think it's, he always gives me shit because I say it wrong. He doesn't give me shit, but he says, George, it's it's Wowsy's, Wowsy's Wizards thing. I don't know. Anyways, it's Wowsy's Workshop, his channel. He's just getting started on it. But this is a piece of wood that I got for Larry because he asked me to keep an eye. This is first growth, uh, old growth cedar. I'm going to, I've thought about this piece too. Oh, it's cracked right here. Big cracked it. That's okay. But I'm going to carve uh, vines on this piece pretty soon. On this. And vines here. And paint them green. Um, there's your carving, Robin. Tucked away. 
this one has to get delivered so what i got to do is look for oh what's that right there because i told larry i says i might have to because i told larry i'm going to make this video i might have to cut up your piece of cedar to make the green man but that's a pretty big piece of cedar to uh cut up for a green man to ship so what's that back there let's see This mushroom guy fell over. I don't know if you guys can see me on the camera, but uh, this might be a nice piece. Take a chunk off of it, then you got some uh, good depth in there. That's cedar. It's first growth. I can tell by the grain, the tight, uh, tight rings. Oh, it looks like it's got some nice color in it. So I think I'm going to pull this piece out and uh, use cut this piece into a piece for the challenge. Yeah, you got lots of depth there. So, anyways, let's. Uh, I got I got too carried away. I'm just so pumped up. I got that grinder, and uh, this this we might just leave this one as a Jordy does video too because well. You know, like, well, how long is this video? It's probably like, yeah, it's a, it's already 10 minutes. So, where's the best piece? I don't want to carve that knot. So I think from here to here, we'll be good. Oh, we got some old cedar there. Oh, yeah, that's nice cedar, too. I don't know if you guys can see the color in it. But how big do I want to make this? So I'm sloping it in so I don't have to slope it in later with the die grinder. Oh, yeah. Some nice color in that cedar, but... I might even paint this piece, but uh, let's see here. See the color in that? But you're not going to see this because I might paint it. So let's get, uh, also I, I talked about Chris, uh, the birdhouse carver, and he's an, he's an owl carver too in there in uh, England. He uh, carves worm, he likes carving the worm, uh, moth owls. They're his favorite owls to carve. But he's told me about the, the new, uh, Steel battery saws are coming out. They're not the one MSA 170 because this is called the 140. They're not called the 170s. They're called the MSA uh, I think it's MSA 50 or MSA 70. I think they're available in the UK. I'm not too sure But uh, yeah, so they're the it's the MS 70 Is what they're coming out with it's like a new upgraded model of it or something Anyways, let me get this uh, standby. So I just want to say, um, if you guys are Dremel carvers, you want to get into the bigger carvings like um, with the die grinders and stuff, get yourself a jaw horse. You can get them cheap. You can get the cheap knockoff ones. Like I got a King Canada one back there. But you get yourself a jaw horse. And um, before I go on, all I do is I got this board clamped into the jaw horse. And I'll get some screws from behind, but you also got to remember. So let me just get this board here. Get I'm going to screw this to a height where I'm where I want to carve it. Right there is probably good. But you got to remember when you put the screws in behind, you don't want to use too long of screws because you don't want to hit those screws with your chainsaw or your die grinder bits because it will dull them really quick so let me get my drill out and get this screwed up here and then um, I'll be back we'll start drawing on and carving so I lied I am going to use my chainsaw just to get rid of this bark because the bark doesn't come off that easy and I'm going to take some of this corner away 
Well, <laughs> I guess I was wrong about that. Look at all the sand in here. This is a piece of driftwood. Okay, so this piece is sloped this way, and it, it goes opposite. It goes this way. So what I'm going to have to do is cut. Well, I'll just show you. Make, try, make it kind of equal. Okay, perfect. I hope this... Oh, that's that cedar smells awesome. Hooey! So... Wow, that's pungent smelling cedar. So I'm basically carving, uh, looks like it's edge grain. You can see the lines. I don't care because this is going to be painted. I'm not a big fan of carving edge grain because, how can I explain? When you carve, the, you'll see the little lines go up and down. And say if you burn it and do a shosugi ban, you're going to see all these straight up and, line, straight up and down lines in your carving. But that's what it doesn't matter. So there's our starting point. Now I'm going to take another break, actually. So I know this piece is standing. It's a little bit off that way. All you do is just open up your jaw horse. Remember that you got those screws in the back, too. So I'm going to take a little break here. And kind of look at this piece and decide how I want to draw the green man on. So, since I'm a born and raised Canadian, A, I think I'm going to incorporate some uh, maple leaves into this green man. I might have to get in front of the camera. So, well, first of all, we'll start off with our center line. Boom. Boom. You know, the green man is basically a wood spirit without the beard and the mustache but if you try and th if you're a wood spirit carver and you're you don't think that you can carve a green man you can you just gotta incorporate the leaves and the vines if that makes sense to you instead of the beard and the mustache so i'm using this orange pen at I'm using this orange pen at first, just to, this will be my template. Then I got this big black pen, so I know that's where my cuts will be. So, um, I'm try I, I, I don't know how well I can explain this. So, his eyes will be here. And then his nose... ...will be here. Now, I've always done my green mounds with the leaves coming down off the face, but I think this time I would like to try and make them come into the face, and then the face is behind the leaves. And the, like I think, well, first of all, let's get this black pen, because there's our eyebrows and our nose. Nose a little bit thick. Now, I think I want to have. I want to. I think I want to create some negative space in this piece, so the vines like there's gaps behind the vines. I think what you're well, just stand by and give me some because I want to explain this so people understand, right? Um. 
the vines. How do you want the vines to go? See, I kind of want the vines to come up here. But then if the vines come up here, that's why this is a trickier carving for, like if I had the, I got to sit down and, and, and process this. So I know one thing right now, after processing it for two seconds, this pungent cedar makes me sneeze. Bless me, if, you, if I just sneezed on camera. The face here is going to be too big because you're not going to be able to get the leaves and the vines and stuff in there. So we got to make the face a lot smaller. And I shouldn't have drawn on with this big marker now because now I got to carve this off all the wood. Where's that uh, die grinder? And uh, redraw it on. Turn it up. Oh, this thing, oh yeah, this is wicked, this sucker. Wait till I start carving it with it. So we want to have a lot smaller face. We'll make sure we do that so we know that's the edge of the face. Because I think it's uh, better to have a smaller face because then you can really accentuate all the the leaves and the vines and stuff I'm not gonna rush this piece but then again I'll probably rush it so we'll just put those marks there so we know that's the side of the face and yeah Maybe I will, um, I, yeah, I got to process this a bit. I, I really didn't, I just woke up this morning and decided I was going to do this. It's better if you can process it a little bit before you, you, you know, look at pictures and stuff like that. So I'm going to look at some pictures here. Okay, so the first green man I found, I kind of just went with that. So I don't know if you guys can see what's going on here, but I got a maple leaf coming off his eyebrows. A maple leaf coming down here, um, vines coming out of his mouth. I don't, this almost is like even more or less a Dremel carving. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove this wood in here. Yeah, I got to carve all this off because we got to get that nose to pop off. and We got to get some depth underneath these eyebrows. So I'm going to cut, all this is going to be carved off to get that nose to pop off and we're going to be using this uh i didn't i didn't show a picture of the specs i'll do right now for this die grinder and um, i'm just going to carve deep in here these eyebrows and uh, remove wood under that nose and get some depth in here i got to put my dust mask on Sorry, everybody. I thought I was filming. It pisses me off, and I wasn't filming. I did this this die grinder. Friggin', I love it. It's so comfortable in the hands. You know, like, it's just awesome. I, I do like it, and I'm not trying to support it. But um, I did this in, like, three minutes. So you see here how I'm trying to take make the face deeper than all the surrounding area so it's tucked in there and then the leaves can be on the outside this is almost like a carving that I should take home and do at my Dremel table so um, I don't know what I'm gonna do now I, I you know what I you know, honestly do you know what I think my problem is right now I'm not being Jordy I think I need to be Jordy just not give a shit and just Start freaking carving the way I do. You know, when I when I carve the way that I do, I carve better. Like not caring. 
I do care though because somebody around the world's going to get this carving. So I think um, I'm not going to have vines coming out of the mouth. I think I'm just going to have his mustache is going to be vines. Um, leave it somewhat simple. And um, I'm going to carve the vines. I'm going to carve his mustache in hit down here. That will be a vine. And then his, the maple leaf will cut, be, his, be his chin right here. And it will be up here too. And then I can do whatever I want to do. Um, so, but I do want to show you guys be carving with this um, die grinder. And show you how powerful it is. This is a beautiful piece of cedar. So stand by, I got to put my dust mask on. Boy, oh boy, that die grinder is awesome, but it sure throws a lot of dust. Even wearing a dust mask. Let me get this uh, all cleaned up. Okay, so there's a. Uh, this kind of reminds me of the Motorhead guy so far. There is um, me just carving, having a good time, so. But yeah, that thing throws a lot of dust. Now, there's just Carver Rob side view. Now, I could push this face back farther. I could push it back farther. And once again, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to uh, drink some coffee. Hi, Robin, out there in Salt Spring. And uh, process. I'm almost pretty well done with the die grinder. So I'm wondering if I should take this home and finish it on my Dremel table so I can be more precise and um, less rushed. You know, when I'm at my table, I can really focus on details. So I'm just not too sure if that's too much curving for my Dremel table. And I like to be outdoors anyways, so. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. I got the maple, some maple leaves, um, layered maple leaves in red here. I'm gonna I'm telling myself I should probably take this home and do it on my finish it off on my Dremel table but I'm gonna first uh, block out these leaves with the Dremel 4300 and uh, cut saw I just heated up to I just torched it up to get the um, dust out of there this is the cut saw extreme taper burr so I think I'm gonna do that here I've already, um, that grinder, sure, it's got a tons of power, like the Makita's. I, can't, I haven't used it enough to confirm if I like it better than the Makita, but I know it's more comfortable. And it does seem like there's a little bit more power. But what I'm going to do is kind of cut these things. Up. And this one, this green man, like I said, you guys can make it um, however you want to be. And I said the folk folklore or whatever said that the green man brought life and at the end of the year like in full time he'd he'd go back to sleep or even die but i'm going to say this guy's going to go back to sleep so i'm going to be this green man's going to be sleeping and all these maple leaves are going to have fall colors in them i'm going to paint them like a uh, yellow orange and red and these vines will be green and yellow. I could even, you know, curve some leaves on these vines, but I don't think I need to. And also at the beginning of this video, let me make sure that I'm in screen here. At the beginning of the video, I said, you know, like, I would want to have some negative spaces in here to get make these vines pop off. The carving so there'll be a hole in here but make sure when you do that you have solid wood so this wood is pretty damn solid there on this uh sap wood where the white wood is here 
there was some bug holes. I don't know if it's going to be able to, there's a little tiny bug hole there. There was some bug holes, but this is a solid piece of wood. So I am going to be able to carve under, I'm going to probably do that here, carve underneath there, give it some uh, negative space in this carving. So let's just uh, get my dust bath going. Yeah, I've sucked in way too much dust from this. Okay, so you can see here I got some of the leaves cut in. Um, I got to cut really deep in there all the way through. But I can't get a good prescut. It's better if I take it to my Dremel carving because then I can set it back, sit down, drink coffee, look at it, and see what I need to do. Because when I'm at the chainsaw shop here, I always feel like I'm rushed. So working hard. I'm more relaxed at my Dremel table. <laughs> Freaking cheap screws. Where's the other one? So yeah, that's what we got so far. I cleaned up the back too. Beautiful piece of cedar, I tell you that for sure. But yeah, now we got to take it back to the Dremel table and uh, clean her up. We can still push that face back a lot farther too. Well, we only got we only got so much wood we can work with. Anyways, sure smells like cedar in here today. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Yeah, this is gonna be going for the dry grad, and then Larry Dibbs is gonna get it for his mom. Um, what I did after I did stop filming, I strip. I got my chain, so I stripped all the water wood off this carving. This is the one that I did the butterflies on, and there's a wood spirit on the side. I put a slit down the back. I talked to the, because it's a commission carving. I talked to the person that the carving's for. He asked, I asked if I could make a slit down the back to possibly make it so the face doesn't crack as much, and he said yes. So that's what I did there. And uh, another shout-out to Chris out there in the U.K., the birdhouse carver that's carving the uh, moth owls. What do you think about that? You think it still looks like a moth eagle? Huh? You can even walk around it a little bit this way. Still looks like a moth eagle. Rooster? Oh, kind of. Anyways, that's how I fix my problems. My mistakes. Yep. I'm going to have to call it quits on this green man today. I've sucked in so much friggin' sawdust. That die grinder man sure carves the wood fast. This thing is kind of, well, it reminds me of a tattoo that I have on my leg. It's like a skull and it kind of looks like there's arms and, and legs, kind of like a spiritual Buddha kind of thing. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Maybe I'll take a picture of my head. It was the first tattoo I ever got on my, first tattoo I ever got, I think I was like 15 or something. But there's so much more work to do. So much more work to do. Um, you can see, the, uh, uh, you can see the depth I got under there. You can see the holes, uh, like under there. Let's see if you can see it. I carved right through, right in there. And up here, I carved all the way through. And up here, I carved all the way through. I know it's hard to see. So, that's going to be crooked. <sighs> There's a lot, a lot, a lot. This is a beautiful piece of cedar. Beautiful piece of cedar. But I just sounded like Donald Trump there. But yeah, I've sucked in way too much dust. So this might be even a three-part series. And don't forget, this. I'm giving this away for the challenge. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my very, very best on this piece. And I'm going to be giving away this die grinder too. And there's great 
going to be great prizes in the challenge. So, if, like I said earlier in the video, I think I said, I'll say in the, the voiceover, anybody that wants to chip in for prizes, this, um, this, I'm going to give this one to whoever, I'm going to donate this one for the challenge, whoever dip, chips in for prizes. So, say if you send me a PayPal, um, make sure you write your name down. Well, no, your pay. Hold on a second. Stop, Jordy. This is what too much sawdust does to me. Send you say me a, my PayPal is going to be listed below in the description. Okay, every everybody knows that I don't scam. Every penny will be accounted for. If you send me a PayPal, you will be entered to win this carving when it's done. If it doesn't work out uh, and it looks like a piece of shit when it's done. I'll carve a, a wicked wood spirit or another green man and, and to donate that too. So whoever chips in for the, because when you chip in, it will be going towards, well, the chip in will be going towards shipping because this can be shipped around worldwide. You go towards shipping and it will be go towards better prizes too, more prizes for the giveaway. And so I will once, I'll write down everybody's name that chipped in through PayPal and then I'll send that off to Larry Dibbs because Larry Dibbs is the one that I guess they call him the treasurer for this giveaway. And then I'll ship this. I'll get. I'll give this to Larry too, and he can ship this too and some Carving Fusion stickers. So that's it, everybody. That's number one done. The first of the Green Man. We got a lot. I got about. I'd say probably about another fifteen hours, another ten hours carving this. Then I got to paint it. So carry on. Carry on.